the dollar collapse will be the single largest event in human history. This will be the first event that will touch every single living person in the world. All human activity is controlled by money. Our wealth, our work, our food, our government, even our relationships are affected by money. No money in human history has had as much reach in both breadth and depth as the dollar. The dollar is the de facto world currency. All other currency collapses will pale in comparison to this big one. All other currency crises have been regional, and there have been other currencies for people to grasp onto. This collapse will be global, and it will bring down not only the dollar, but all other fiat currencies, as they are fundamentally no different. The collapse of currencies will lead to the collapse of all paper assets, and the repercussions to this will have incredible results worldwide. Thanks to globalization and the giant vampire squids of the Anglo-American Empire, the dollar is the world's reserve currency. It supports the world economy in settling foreign trade, most importantly the petrodollar trade. The money is then recycled through the City of London, not to be confused with London, and Wall Street. This fuels corporate vampires that acquire and harvest the world's wealth. The corporate powers then suppress real assets like natural resources and labor to provide themselves massive profits. This fascist, statist, collectivist model provides the money into the economy to fund an ever-increasing federal government. The government then grows larger and larger, enriching its minions with jobs to control their fellow citizens. Finally, to come full circle, the government then controls other nations through its military-industrial complex. This cycle will be cut when the mathematically inevitable collapse of the dollar happens. In order for our debt-based money to function, we must increase debt every year in excess of the debt and interest accrued the year before, or we will enter a deflationary death spiral. When debt is created, money is created. When debt is paid off, money is destroyed. There is never enough to pay off the debt because there would not be one dollar in existence. We are at a point where we will either default on the debt or create more money in debt to keep this cycle going. The problem is if you understand anything about compounding interest, we are reaching a hockey stick moment where the more debt that is incurred, the less effective it is and this leads us to hyperinflation. There are only two actors needed for this hyperinflation, the lender of last resort, the Federal Reserve, and the spender of last resort, the government. These two can and will blow up the entire system. I believe that they will wait until the next crisis and the whiff of a deflationary depression before they fire up the printing presses. That crisis is coming very soon as we can only kick the can down the road so long. Money and emergency measures will be worn out. The fact that none of the underlying problems that caused the 2008 crisis have been resolved. The only thing different from the 2008 crisis is that instead of corporate problems, we now have national problems. In this movie, Greece will play the role of Lehman Brothers and the United States will play the role of AIG. The problem is there is nowhere to kick the can down the road and there is no world government to absorb the debt yet. This leads me to the top five places not to be when the dollar collapses. Number one on this list I believe is Israel. This Anglo-American beachhead into the Middle East was first conceived by the most powerful family in the world, the Rothschilds, in 1917. The Balfour Declaration said that there would be a Zionist Israel years before World War II and the eventual establishment of Israel. Israel has not been a good neighbor and has always had the biggest bullies on the block at its back. When the dollar collapses, the United States will have much more on its plate both domestically and internationally to worry about this non-strategic piece of land. This will leave Israel very weak at a time when tensions will be high. This very thin strip of desert land will not be able to stand the economic reality of importing its food and fuel or the political reality of being surrounded by nations that don't care for it. Second on this list I feel is Southern California. The land of fruit and nuts turns into Battlefield Los Angeles. 20 million people packed into an area that has no food and water is not good to say the least. Throw on top of it huge wealth disparities and the proximity to a narco state and this does not bode well. We have seen the riots for Rodney King, but what will happen when the dollar is destroyed and food and fuel stop coming into this area? Number three on this list is London. The land of Big Brother and the former empire of the worldwide slave and drug trade will suffer heavily. The stiff upper lip that the British elite ingrained in their subjects will not work anymore as the British population explodes. People will sacrifice and unite for any foreign enemy, but not if that enemy has always been the British elite. The Anglo-American Empire may pull off another false flag to distract its population on another Emmanuel Goldstein like in 1984, but I feel this collapse will happen before they can pull it off. This will make all eyes point at the British elite as solely responsible for this catastrophe. We have seen massive riots for soccer matches with hooligans. What will happen when the food and fuel gets shut off to this tiny island? Number four on this list is New York City. Another large urban area living too high on the dollar hog. New York City is the area I moved out of in 2008. There is little doubt that all of the wealth in New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut is a derivative off of Wall Street wealth. 
The savings and investment for an entire nation and much of the world flows through that financial capital. As the world wakes up to the massive financial fraud, this could lead to the destruction of capital like you've never seen before. This will have tremendous effects on the regional economy as people driving Mercedes suddenly wonder where their next meal is coming from. The fifth and final place not to be when the dollar collapses is your local metropolitan area. Urban areas in general are a very bad place to be during currency collapses. Too many people packed into tight areas, totally unprepared and dependent upon a dollar paradigm is the last place you want to be when the dollar collapses. You can ignore reality, but you cannot ignore the consequences of ignoring reality. Ayn Rand to sum it up, those areas that lived highest on the hog in the dollar paradigm will most likely be the worst places to live when the dollar collapses. Most that live in urban areas will probably pass this off as doom and gloom, but rest assured, this dollar collapse is happening. It is a mathematical inevitability. We will not be as fortunate as to muddle through this collapse like we did in 2008 when it was a corporate problem. This time around it is a national or a global problem. The global Ponzi scheme has run out of gas, as demographics decline, as abundant cheap oil declines, as our global power declines. This comes at a time when we reach our exponential or collapse phase of our money. The irresistible force paradox says, what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object? We are about to find out when infinite money hits a very finite world. Where do you put your money? What's the number one conviction trade right now for you, 2020? Uh, silver. Silver? Silver? No. Why not gold? Uh, because when you look at the relative values of silver and gold, uh, silver today is about, uh, let's say, 60, 65% below its prior peak. Gold is, is getting very close to its prior peak. Can it go exponential like we're seeing in some of the non-precious metals? Uh, I think there's a high probability of that. I would call monetary policy a policy of bubble to bubble. For instance, you know, to save the, the, the economy after the stock market crash, Right, the Fed cut rates and overinflated commercial real estate, and then we had to bail out the banks with the Resolution Trust Corporation. So then once things calmed down again, investors no longer thought that commercial real estate was safe, and they inflated the internet bubble to the wealth effect to keep the economy going. And then of course it went bust, and so then people didn't feel safe in stocks, so they started buying homes. And we, we played that out, and, and it bust. And so we're, 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 my attitude is when you look at the amount of leverage uh, in corporate America uh, and where we are today, you've, you, you definitely are inflating a bubble here in credit. Is the elasticity or malleability of the system there so we can respond and react when we get that? Or is it a jump condition where it's going to be ugly? Well, you know, one of, one of my colleagues at Guggenheim likes to say that asset prices go up on an escalator and they come down. Well, normal. And Absolutely. they come down in an yeah. elevator, yeah. right? So the, the problem is since no, nobody I know is smart enough to figure out when the music stops, you know, uh, I think that's a really difficult thing for people to try to, to time. 